In the old days when we mixed music, we mixed music to sound good. Nobody worried about, you know, in fact, it was really fun to crank up the speakers in a control room and man, those woofers are in the walls are shaking. Great fun. And nobody really thought about electrical levels and specifications. It was all VU meters and we knew that there was headroom and, you know, it was kind of cool to like saturate the tape. Those days are over. We're in a different world and um, there's a war going on. Um, in fact, there are a couple of wars going on. It started with AM radio trying to be the loudest guy in the block. And then FM did that. And then uh, uh, the records, suddenly all the record producers realized that if they made their records a little louder sounding, maybe it might come out a little louder over the air. Well, all of that's led us to where we are now, which is we have, we have two completely and I'm talking post-production, not, not music. We have two completely different directions, uh, a, a way to approach a mix. And it's funny because I have to do both of them. It's just that I have to do one approach on this job, and then the thing I start tomorrow is the other approach. Those approaches are, we've got film theater, which is, uh, you know, you go in a big room with all your friends and eat your popcorn and the lights go down and the screens like that and the speakers are these enormous things and it's this enveloping, wonderful experience and you're there, you're in the moment. Dynamics are a great thing. You want those, you want a gunshot to, to hit you in the chest. You want to hear those superb bass drums ro rattling the room. You want to hear all those things. Now, contrast that. I live in New York City. New York City is a very noisy place. Every neighbor is on top of the other neighbor. You can't get away from the noise here in the city. And when we watch television at home, one of the, one of the last things we want to do is to be jamming the buttons on the remote control up and down. And I find sometimes when we're, when we're watching movies on HBO and things like that, it's, they're mixed for film theater. They have dynamics. They have this booming, pounding music track and the dialogue, you know, once the music's done, you gotta like crank up the volume again. That doesn't fly for real broadcast work. And the broadcasters know that and they've put these loud and specifications as part of the deliverables that we are contractually obligated to fulfill. So it's kind of interesting that um, we're stuck with all these different numbers, uh, uh, minus 22, minus 23, minus 24, minus 27, minus 29, I don't care, minus I don't care. These are all the specifications that I've hit this last year. Um, the importance of it though is the broadcasters know they have to, they have to keep me as a viewer engaged in their show. And every time I have to grab for the remote, I'm not thinking about the show anymore. I'm thinking about where's the damn remote? Get out of the way, cat, <laughs> you know? So it's important that when we're mixing for broadcast that, that we make sure the dynamics are, are controlled uh, and, and always deliver the story which uh, for television, it's often coming from the dialogue. We gotta make sure that the message, the story, everything is on point and on point so much that when my neighbors are arguing next door or if I've got the window in the apartment open and all the air conditioning from all the other apartments is clearly audible coming through the window, all of those things compete with the show that I'm mixing. So I have to make sure that everything is very tightly controlled and what's important has to be heard. Uh, compression comes into that. It's part of this whole dial norm and, and LKFS and LUFS and what did you guys call it? Uh, it's not dial norm anymore. It's uh, Anchor elements, yes, it's the anchor elements. Well, that's what I'm saying. The important elements, the anchor elements are at a nominal level and 
always audible, no matter what. Um, and, and so I think that there's actually a positive behind. I'm annoyed with, with uh, anchor elements and with uh, uh, loudness specifications because they make my job harder. But honestly, I think that it's, it's a very valuable thing uh, because it should be making the end user's experience an easier one. It delivers the message in a better, smoother way. So deep down, I'm really for it. But as an audio guy who's battling the specifications, I'm against it. <laughs> so it's this duality that I'm, I'm constantly fighting, but I know loudness, control, I know it's a good thing. And in fact, I practice it uh, to a very extreme degree sometimes for broadcast. Uh, it's been great to talk today and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity and I'm uh, Steve, glad that you sold me this box those 10 years ago and have uh, uh, kept me up to date with it, uh, especially with the latest update and uh, uh, that you guys have made these algorithms and you've continually upgraded this thing. It doesn't cost me to upgrade the software. I have to buy algorithms once in a while or licenses, but uh, the fact that it's been this workhorse for so many years and that now you've given me a chance to talk about this workhorse, uh, I very much appreciate it. So nice to speak with you. Hope it wasn't too boring. lights beaming down on it.